welcome to live market meeting 4th september 2019 i am sagan nandi i am the designer and developer of q trading systems and techniques i used to work in information technology i retired about six years ago nowadays i do trading mostly in stocks mostly short-term trading and nowadays i live in thailand Before I begin, let me go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profit trading system, on the systems and techniques that I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will look at the global markets and also the USA market using technical charts and then look for trading opportunities on the live market. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me continue with the live system. We begin the global market study using Australia's AXJO index. I'm looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together, I call this at a glance template because you can use this template to decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. One week ago, AXJO went up the candle color and shape in the weekly chart. Both were bullish. In the daily chart, at that time, it displayed the bullish headwind and went up from there. There was no low risk entry opportunity because price was still in a downtrend. Now it has recovered somewhat after displaying the bullish headwind very nicely. Pull back. If it can go up again in the daily chart, it gives a cyan colored candle. And if the weekly also turns cyan at the same time, then we'll have a low risk go with flow trend following long setup. Is it likely? It doesn't look so likely to me because the weekly color is still magenta. Even if price goes up tomorrow and the daily gives a cyan color candle, the weekly may not turn from magenta to cyan. Not sure. If it turns cyan, then we'll have a low risk trend following long entry opportunity. Right now, we'll stand aside. If you watched my last market roundup, every weekend I submit the video in the YouTube channel here. Now the channel has a nice name, Trading Profitably. In that video, I mentioned that I am not sure of the direction of the USA market. Therefore, I myself would prefer to not enter many new trades, either in the long direction or in the short direction. While I am going through the global markets, you will see I am arriving at the same conclusion. At least using Q techniques, there is no low risk entry opportunity in any of the global markets as well. This was Australian market. It was in a downtrend for swing trading purpose here. And now it has recovered to value area. Now we have to see if it goes up or not. I didn't talk much about what will happen if it goes down, because even if it goes down, there is a memory support nearby. This automatically drawn very smart trend line. Even if it goes down, we are not going to short it immediately. There is a memory support in daily as well as in weekly 
for a bear trade i will wait for price to break below the memory support then recover a little bit and then go down again giving me a low risk trend following go with for a short trade opportunity it's not going to come anytime soon or so i think <laughs> market may prove me otherwise we'll see whatever happens we'll be able to decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity and take it in either direction that was australian market what about china market china is always in the news now it is csi 300 index here the weekly chart is looking bullish until last week it was below the memory resistance this week it is nicely breaking out above the memory resistance that is bullish however when i look at the daily chart it is moving in a sideways range sideways because it is bound by this resistance memory and support memory wide range and also sideways range because there are multiple watermark levels resistance levels very close to each other when multiple watermark levels are close to each other then that end in this case the highs are nearby at the lower end we have memory support so it is moving in a sideways range even if the weekly is looking bullish i am not going to take any trade in csi 300 right now when was the last possible entry opportunity that was in the long direction at this point when it came to the white direction line went below that and regained the white direction line displayed a bull release signal this green dot and the candle color also turned bullish that was the last possible entry opportunity using what technique the technique is if an instrument is moving in a sideways range then wait for the price to come to an extreme in this case to the lower end and then let it display a release signal at a lower end it will be the bull release signal you could try to take the long on this candle also that also had a bull release signal if we go by the unambiguous checklist for box trade setup the q box trade setup then we would also need very or extreme high activity and we can see very high activity was there when price was dropping therefore on this yellow candle we could consider taking a long trade in a sideways market at the lower end of the sideways market now it has reached the upper end of the sideways market we would book profit in fact i would probably book profit somewhere along the way the entry price could be let's say entry was on the green candle you could also enter on the yellow candle in either case the stop loss would be just below the recent low here this was the risk distance one of these two vertical lines and once price reached the cover once price covered the risk distance i would book profit so i could book profit partial profit on this candle or on this candle now if it continues to go up that is good i may continue to hold partial position that is how i could take a trade in csi 100 in a sideways market at this point now it is too late to take a trade it is overbought we can see that also from the stretch band indicator no low risk entry opportunity in china market you will see the same conclusion i am arriving at in the other markets also hsi hang seng index here price was going down other than being affected by the china usa trade discussion it was also being affected by political issues it came to this support level which was near the previous long tail low at this point 
almost precisely bounced up from there. At this point, it displayed a bullish headwind signal, possible reversal signal. However, that candle had an upper tail. So we would not consider that very bullish. This week, it is going up strongly so far. The weekly candle color is still neutral. It is displaying a bull release signal. It is bullish. In the daily chart, it has actually displayed a cyan color candle after making a higher low. Therefore, in the daily chart, it is meeting all the requirements of the go with flow trend following long trade setup. That is as far as daily chart is concerned. However, weekly chart is not cyan yet. Therefore, we don't have a trend following long trade setup, go with flow setup if we apply the checklist. That is how if you continue to use the checklist for a while, you will see they are designed to keep you away from risky trades. Sometimes people just look at the daily chart and take a trade. In that case, one would take a long trade in this case, creating a W pattern. Some people call it W pattern. Some people may call it cup and handle, same thing double bottom basically in this case the one bottom is deeper than the other bottom whatever be the name if we just look at the daily chart then there seems to be a possible trading opportunity probably not by the end of today somewhere inside the candle today's candle using real time chart why not by the end of today because it was a very big move day the stop loss would be significantly far away from entry price. Entry price will be here at today's close if somebody was using today's close and the stop loss will be just below recent low that is quite a distance away. The next possible profit target may be the white direction line or upper boundary. For me the risk is too much if I was going to enter it at the end of the day. In any way the weekly is not meeting the checklist conditions for the go with flow trend following long trend. That is fine. This is the index. If somebody was seeing that Hang Seng index is bullish, they didn't have to trade the index. In fact, my preference is to look into the index constituents or other strong fundamental stocks in Hong Kong market and look for a stock where we have all the checklist conditions being made. I'm pretty sure you would find such a checklist meeting trend following long trade setup in one of the Hang Seng Index components today. Now I am not going to take any trade. If it continues to go up, then I cannot take a trade because the stop loss will continue to be far away. What about if it comes down? If it comes down, there is not going to be any immediate trade because it already created a higher high. Today's high is higher than the previous swing high. It has created higher high. So we cannot take a trend following short trade if any price goes down now. We have to wait for it to create another swing before taking a trend following short trade. We cannot take a bounce trade in the short direction for that. We will have to wait for price to come to the memory resistance and bounce down from there. There is no headwind signal, bearish headwind signal at least today. So we cannot take a headwind short trade and it is not in a sideways range. So we cannot take a box trade. It takes a while to articulate all these possibilities. But once you start using the charts for a while, you will come to the same conclusion almost instantaneously. Like I seem to be able to do. That is as far as Q techniques is concerned. What is the next likely move? That is probably in the long direction. 
However, that doesn't mean I'm going to take a trade because my experience has shown if I wait patiently for a trade setup, that meets all the checklist conditions, then my success rate is pretty good to be able to make some profit from the market. So I distinguish between these two statements. One is next likely move or whether the instrument is bullish and the other is whether there is a low risk entry opportunity. In this case, there is no low risk entry opportunity for me. The same conclusion that I arrived at in Australian market, China market, and now Hong Kong market. Let's look at the India market. It was declining for a while and it is continuing to decline. Is it today's candle? It is actually yesterday's candle. Today's market is already closed. This is downloaded data. Let me open today's market. I have access to real-time data. This is India's Nifty index in the weekly. After displaying the bearish shadow nicely, it dropped. One week ago, the candle color turned neutral. This week's candle color is remaining neutral. Yesterday, when price was near the bottom of the tail, then the weekly candle color had turned magenta. And then I saw daily also had a magenta color candle that seemed to give a go with flow trend following short trade setup. This example also illustrates the challenge you may say, or the care one may need to take when looking at the weekly candle color. If I'm looking at it during the week, in this case, I was looking at it yesterday, Tuesday. That was too early to decide if the weekly candle was going to end as magenta candle or not. How do I then decide a go with flow trade or headwind trade or even box trade, which rely on the weekly candle color also? Can I take such a trade during the week? It is possible to take such a trade, taking into consideration the previous week's color. In this case, the previous week's color was not magenta. If previous week's color was magenta, then yesterday's candle color being magenta was a more confirmed signal for a go with flow short trade. But previous week was not magenta in this case. That is the caution that one needs to apply when using the weekly color candle during the day. Right now it is moving in a downtrend. So far we have lower low. It seems to me the next likely move is down. If it goes up, then until this memory resistance is broken, I am not going to take any long trade. And once it is broken, the stop loss may be far away. So I will wait for it to make another swing low, giving a trend following go with flow long trade setup. Right now, there is no low risk entry opportunity for me. Let's look at the UK market. and I'm using online system now. Here also, price went up last week. The weekly color turned neutral. This week it is turning bullish. In the daily, it displayed a bullish headwind at the very bottom. Then it created a double bottom and went up. It came to the value area because it is now making a higher high. If it comes down a little bit and goes up again, then I will have a trend following go with flow long trade setup. Assuming the weekly remains cyan. Right now it is too far from the current low to take a long trade. What if it goes down? If it goes down now, I will not have any trend following short trade for two reasons. 
one is that it created higher high already so it is not in a downtrend only if i have a downtrend i can apply the go with flow trade setup short trade setup in a downtrend here i have higher high so i cannot apply the go with flow trade setup even if price comes down now another reason is that the weekly is cyan it is unlikely that even if the daily chart starts to move down the daily will immediately turn magenta that is unlikely so i am not going to have any low risk entry opportunity if any price comes down from here probably i will have to wait for price to break below this memory support then go up a little bit and come down again what about the usa market so far i didn't find any low risk entry opportunity and I mentioned in the weekly market roundup that was my view during the weekend and that is remaining my view now also market hasn't opened yet today wednesday for september it is still inside the range bound by memory resistance and memory support in the daily chart even if the weekly has turned bullish it turned bullish one week ago itself that's what i mentioned in the weekly market roundup but looking at the triangle pattern in the daily i mentioned i'm not going to take any trade unless it can clear this range and i am more clear about the direction that has not happened yet that is spy and qqq nasdaq also inside a range in the daily chart in fact if you followed my twitter page the twitter page is sagarnandi page in twitter then you would notice that yesterday i think yesterday when price was near the memory resistance it was near the memory resistance in multiple instruments multiple market ETFs, I mentioned those give low risk reversal trading opportunities. However, I wouldn't take it using the daily time frame chart because I am not seeing any bear release signal here. When I see multiple instruments in a range, multiple market ETFs, and all of them are at one extreme of the range, in this case, the higher end, and starts to go down from the memory resistance then i can switch to intraday fine tune chart and look for a short setup in which etf i will like to short the etf that is going below early range low fast first before others so i tend to look at during market hours let me switch to q elite and I don't have a multi chart template here. Let me copy the window and I explain what I was mentioning. This is a webinar desktop formation that I am using during trading usually i will have one monitor with all the market etfs the four market etfs side by side in the morning session five minute interval in the afternoon session 10 minute interval i have to make all of them 10 and then yesterday when let me scroll to yesterday's beginning. Not yesterday, two days ago. When price opened higher with a gap up open. Why? Because all of the, okay, I'm looking at the same ETF in all the panels. <laughs> yes, IWM, give me a minute. Keep, 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 keep. 
Da ja. Yes. All of them opened with a gap up. All of them opened above their respective green automatically drawn pivot line. Green green pivots on the intraday fine tune chart. They are previous days high. So they all opened with gap up and then the early range low and high form the cyan pair of pivot lines. And then all of them were starting to go down on the intraday chart, fine tune chart. I don't trade just based on the intraday time frame. However, as I mentioned, three of them were near daily memory resistance. So I was ready to short, but not ready to short using daily time frame. There was no stretch release signal. There was no Q trade setup on the daily interval. So I could switch to the intraday interval and then look for a shorting opportunity. I am using 10 minute interval now, but in real life trading in the morning session, I would use five minute interval and then see which of them is dropping below early range low fast. In this case, it seems to be, it could be any one of them. If I use the 10 minute interval, then you can see that IWM was the weakest. It turned magenta very fast on the third bar after open using 10 minute interval. Whereas Daya took quite some time before it turned red and then magenta. QQQ also took more number of bars and SPY also took more number of bars. So using the early range breakout technique, you could take a shot just as price went below early range low. Stop would be just above days high or early range high. And when price came to this point, you had much more than risk distance covered. Risk was this much, reward was this much. You would book at least partial profit and apply trailing stop in a way that the entire trade is risk free from that point onward. How to do that? One way to do that is to book profit on two third of the position and leave the stop on the remaining position at the initial stop loss. Then wait for price to come up, make a swing high and then move stop here. Then if, if you are watching the market whole day, I don't do that. If you see another swing high is forming, then you move the stop. Then you will be stopped out near the end of the day. The remaining position will also exit with reasonable profit and the initial position would have a larger profit. That is how using the daily resistance level, you could decide to take a trade, you could get ready that if the price reverses, you would take a trade. In this case, you could use the daily interval resistance line, memory resistance, and you could also use the fact that IWM in this case, in fact, all the market ETFs gave a gap short day trade setup. That is they opened with a gap up and then started to go down. That setup is also explained in the Q systems and techniques books. You could take that trade in IWM and I went to explain how using the daily memory resistance you could anticipate a trade and actually take the trade using intraday time frame. On the daily chart, QQQ has no trade setup, still in a range. And DIA, Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, is not inside a range, but it is moving sideways. Not inside a range means doesn't have any memory resistance nearby, memory support is there, but there is no trade setup. It is moving erratically. And IWM, it was the weakest and is remaining the weakest. In the daily chart, it is moving down with lower high. You can say lower low also. 
Robert, the daily is, sorry, the weekly is yellow. Therefore, even if we had a magenta color candle yesterday, we didn't have a trend following short trade setup for two reasons. One is the weekly was not magenta. Another reason is the daily had a lower tail. Again, that is how the checklists are designed to enter a trade only when more and more and more conditions are in our favor. There is no trade setup in IWM also. So I prefer not to take any trade in this market. Having said that, no harm looking at the stock, some of the stocks at least, at least to illustrate how I use the system. One way is to run the Q sonar program, that is the explorer. Another way is to go to the industry rotation analysis, which has an inside tab where I can see the best performing stocks under different categories. Just simple best performing stocks or stocks going up with volume pressure or best performing growth stocks or best performing value stocks. And for shorting opportunity, there are the equivalent categories of worst performing overvalued stock, worst performing growth stock, etc. If I am interested in buying undervalued stocks, then the next step is for me to check if one sector or one industry is coming more often in this list. And I can see healthcare has come maximum number of times. If they are in biotechnology, I am careful because biotechs can suddenly go up and down and two of them are in biotech. So let me ignore those two. And I'm left with two other stocks. Those are undervalued stocks that went up when one by 8.8%, another by 3.8%. They're in two different industries. Let me choose one at a time and see how is the industry doing. Points monitor in healthcare distributors and instantly from the industry panel, I can see it is doing quite well. Last over two day period and one day period, it is doing very well. Earlier it was weaker, that is good. It is an undervalued stock. So I, I am happy if the industry was doing poorly before and now starting to go up. So the industry is okay for me. The stock is fundamentally undervalued. Next step is to look at the chart. Let me look at omi.n. Okay, what was the symbol? Let me check again. OMI dot N. All public symbol symbol starts with OMI. Okay, just OMI. Okay, and this is looking like an interesting stock for me. I'm carrying out this exercise with live market. That is how we can apply it in the live market. The weekly is still loading. And now it has loaded. The weekly displayed multiple bearish, sorry, not bearish, multiple bullish headwind signals at the bottom. And now it is going up in an uptrend in the weekly. The weekly backdrop color is sand for multiple weeks. In the daily, let me, delete some of the memory trend lines. So the pattern will be clearer. In the daily, it created a saucer-like base, then it went up, created higher high, pulled back and went up again. In fact, we had a cyan color candle here. That was the signal for the first possible trend following long trend. In this case, the weekly was cyan for multiple weeks. Therefore, when the cyan candle came in the daily chart, 
we had a go with flow trend following long trade setup that was meeting all the checklist conditions that is the kind of trades that i wait for and when that signal came i didn't have to second case i could take the trade at the close of that day i was happy because the stop loss was close by and once the risk distance is covered i am happy to book partial profit in fact I could book partial profit yesterday itself. In this case, the stock is undervalued. We can look at it again. Let me do a peer analysis of this stock, OMI.N. I'm doing the peer analysis with OMI as the root stock. Next earnings is 29th October. It has found number of peer stocks its stocks and now it is calculating the vital statistics for all the stocks it is undervalued stock immediately i know that from the cyan color in valuation earnings growth is not great that is fine that's why the stock is down otherwise it would not be down i can see revenue growth is positive and it has a short squeeze potential if you see the percentage change then it is moving up nicely it was in a downtrend earlier and we had the first trend following long trade setup a few days ago actually three days ago if we ran this exercise either top down or bottom up regularly then we could identify this long opportunity on this hand colored candle today will i take it i usually answer it in the way that because i'm regular trader i'm finding opportunities like that regularly i don't have to wait for two days today if i am not going to enter long in omi there are probably other stocks this is in a defensive sector so it, that is also a, a a point in favor of me taking the trade it is an undervalued stock going up we had the first trend following long trade setup the industry is strong so i could look for trades from the inside or i could look for trades from the explorer i already ran a series of explorers market is moving sideways so i don't know which one to look for let me look for buy the trend that is stocks that are in confirmed uptrend and going up i already ran it on a list of 324 stocks those stocks have very liquid options i can transfer the data to trade finder in here i can see that out of that 324 stocks 23 23 has given a bullish signal of some kind of what kind it can be a bullish u turn or bullish pressure gap breakout pullback setup trend following go with flow touching the memory bouncing from memory bullish headwind etc i can see there is no bullish headwind that came yesterday red bar red color indicates today that is the last days i can see this stock medicines that is mdco it had multiple sales signal yesterday it had u turn plus bullish pressure plus gap plus go with plot trend following long trade setup let me have a look at that stock. This trade finder is very powerful because it shows not only what is happening today, but it is also showing me what is happening, what happened yesterday or this week or previous week or even before that. Even before that, I'm not interested for swing trading, but I can sort it by the maximum number of signals appearing this week, for example, 
that is last five days. So if I sort by the blue column, then these are the stocks giving maximum number of bullish signals, not necessarily today, but this week. If I want today and yesterday, last two days, then I can sort by the green column. And if it is current date, then I can sort by the red column. Pretty useful. Let me look at medicines. I do a fundamental analysis first. It is connecting with Refinitive. I have no data stored. I don't like to fiddle with stored data, manage the data, copy from one computer to another. Too much hassle using Refinitive helps me focus on the market, not so much on data. It is a biotech stock, industry biotechnology, overvalued stock. Earnings growth is turning positive. In the yearly periods, the latest quarter, it went down. Revenue growth is also not interesting. Fundamentally, it doesn't look like a strong stock. So in my trading, if there is nothing much in favor of fundamentals, I don't like to take a long trade. I am going to combine all the forces here. Fundamentally, something is in favor. One is the yearly period, earnings is going up. Another, I can see there is a short squeeze potential. Let me look at the industry. Industry is not interesting. So let me not look at the chart. Even if the chart is interesting, I'm not going to take a trade because fundamentals are not good. Biotechs often don't have good fundamentals. They can still go up, but the industry is also not good. I can stay away from that. When that happens, I delete it from my list. And let me look at another stock let me market is moving sideways let me see if any stock is breaking out three of them are breaking out one is xlp etf one is sony one is dva davita davita has three signals this week let let me focus on davita it has a breakout current day the green color is showing that yesterday it gave a trend following long trade setup. That is the flow color was green and this week it had a gap. Let me look at the stock chart. That is DVA. This is looking interesting also. Instantly you see in a Second, I can decide. Looking interesting. Means ready? No. If it was ready, I would have said it is looking ready. It is giving this trade setup or that trade setup. It is very close to the memory resistance in daily and weekly. If it can break out of that, then I can take a breakout trade. However, in this case, the stop will be far away. How do I take a trade in that case? I can switch to intraday chart. For example, today if it opens above the memory resistance and continues to go up, then using the intraday chart, using the intraday entry technique, I can look for a long opportunity. I'm not so much fond of staring at the market, but sometimes I take a trade like that. Like I explained, I could take in IWM gap short day trade one or two days ago. So that will be one technique if it opens with a uh, opening price that is above the memory resistance continues to go up switch to intraday chart or wait for price to pull back and go up again i can see the weekly is signed now so if it goes up in the daily the weekly is going to remain signed when it pulls back a little bit if it gives a higher low goes up again that will give a trend following long trade setup so i am in no hurry i can add it to my list of stocks list of stocks that watch list for bullish trades dva i found it from trade finder because it gave multiple signals let me look at its fundamentals Again, it is connecting with Refinitiv. It's in healthcare services. 
I found several stocks earlier from this industry, isn't it? From the inside. Let me look at its industry strength again. Industry. This is the one that we looked into earlier also. I found another stock, isn't it? A possible buy opportunity. This industry is strong. Going back to the fundamentals, it is undervalued stock. Earnings growth is picking up. These are my favorite kind kinds of stocks where the valuation is great, undervalued stock. In this case, earnings quality is also robust and it is showing increasing earnings growth, both in the quarterly and yearly periods. So DVA is a stock that I am happy to buy if it gives me a low risk entry opportunity in the coming days. That is how I look for trades, either using the insight or using Q sonar, sometimes dropping them in trade finder, and sometimes also by top down analysis. The top down analysis I demonstrate in the weekly market roundups, looking at the sectors. seeing which sector is strongest. And you can see again, utilities, real estate became strongest sectors and then consumer staples, then healthcare. It's not a bullish market, though S&P 500 and QQQ, everything going up. In a bullish market, we will not have all the defensive sectors coming to the top. That, that is the reason I'm not going to take many trades now, neither long nor short. Let me end today's session. That is how, whatever be the market condition, I try to apply all the forces, the industry level force, the technical force and the fundamental force, align them with the trade. If the market is bullish, only look for bullish trades. Market is bearish, only look for weakness in all the forces. And when the market is range bound, like it is now, better to avoid taking trades, or if you still want to take, you may switch to intraday time frame and try to take trade. Not my suggested technique. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.